This is Goku Sun DBC, and I'm doing a special top 12 list. This is not top 12 Sunday. I'm filming and recording on Monday, and it might be a little later than I was expecting to do the Star Wars discussion, spoiler discussion about the Force Awakens, which I just saw for a second time today. Better the second time. Anywho, um, this is my personal picks. Top 12 most anticipated films of 2016. Now, these are just films I'm most personally looking forward to in the upcoming year. And here they are. First, honorable mentions. Since they had of right before number one. Honorable mentions. First, Gambit, which is supposed to be towards the end of the year, I remember correctly. I'm still kind of curious, but that's why it's an honorable mention. Star Trek Beyond, which um, I was looking more forward to after the first trailer. It dropped out of the top 12 to just honorable mentions list. Also, Zootopia from Disney, a CG film. Also a CG film, Angry Birds. I can't believe I'm actually curious about it, but the trailer got me a little bit of curiosity. The Also another CG film, The Secret Life of Pets. I'm actually maybe looking a little more forward to it now than I was before. I gotta admit, it looks like it's gonna be a really funny, hilarious film. And I'm really looking forward to it. There's only on certain occasions that CG films you're usually get my interest. And it's most of the time always Pixar films. This is one of the few times that it's not a Pixar film, but just a in general interesting film. Okay, and the last honorable mention, The Revenant, which I will probably be seeing in a few weeks once it has its nationwide release, not a selective like right now, which of course is starring uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and they for understood film the entire film in just natural light outside. They didn't use any like a lighting equipment of any kind to use strictly natural sunlight for all of the filming. So that should add a more natural element to it, which I does have my curiosity. Coming in at number 12, which of course gets released in selected theaters Christmas Day, and then January though is when it comes nationwide, so, which is why it's on uh, number 12 most anticipated film of next year because it doesn't actually get released nationwide until January. And that is from a Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino, his new film coming out starring uh, characters such as Samuel L. Jackson and many others. And of course that is The Hateful Eight, which I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Western movies, but Quentin Tarantino has my intrigue. After Surprisingly enjoying uh, Django Unchained, which I admit was actually a really good film, and I thought uh, Leonardo DiCaprio played an awesome bad guy in that movie. I very much enjoyed him in it, and I also very much enjoyed Jamie Foxx in the movie. That's one thing I'll say. Jamie Foxx still has a really great career of him, of him in acting. I've seen him in a couple of things, like uh, films that aren't liked. I actually enjoyed him in it was Electro and Amazing Spider-Man 2. I also very much enjoyed him in the biopic about uh, Ray Charles. That was a really awesome movie. Jamie Foxx is a really good actor. I think he has a very good career still to come in his acting area. He's definitely good at the dramatic drama type roles, more so than anything else. But yeah, this is number 12 most looking forward to movie next year is The Hateful Eight. Coming in at number 11 is a movie I really originally didn't care about one way or the other, but surprisingly now, I'm actually kind of looking forward to. 
But I'm still worried because it's being directed by Michael Bay, and I'm not the biggest fan of Michael Bay movies, so I'm kind of worried. And no, it's not Ninja Turtles 2. That I have no interest in. No, it's called 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. And it's supposed to be based on, of course, true events of what happened a few years back in the whole Benghazi situation. So, I'm definitely going to be curious to see how the film ends up. And, to be fair, Michael Bay is going to have to be very careful how he does things in this movie, given he's using, based on true material and stuff, He's got to play things much more cautiously involving this situation than he did with the crappy, of course, uh, like, three-way love triangle going on with that stupid Pearl Harbor crap movie. He's, But I'm still looking forward to it. I really enjoyed the trailer, though we've learned by now Michael Bay can do good trailers, but not really. But I'm... Going to give Michael Bay a chance because this isn't his traditional style movie. It isn't. He goes more for the big, like, action-packed summer type movies. This looks like more of a dramatic type action, like, um, based on true events type movie. It's not his traditional style, taste type movie. But yes, number 11... 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. I'm very curious about. We shall see if it ends up good or not. But I'm actually crossing my fingers for once on a Michael Bay movie. Coming in number 10 is a movie based on a video game, of course, that I've actually never played. I've played the, or well, I've tried before the MMO game World of Warcraft, but I've never actually played the strict Warcraft game, which is much older. I have not had a chance to try it, because one, I don't play PC games, which is why. But I have to admit, coming in number 10 is Warcraft movie. I'm very kind of curious about it, to say the least. It does have my interest. Um, I really hope overall. From what I saw from the first trailer, the CG does look pretty decent overall, especially with the orcs. It wasn't that bad. The the costume design stuff of the soldiers, like their armor designs, is supposed to, from what one of my friends said, which is big into Warcraft, he said that it was very loyal to the actual designs of the armor and stuff in the actual video game. So, I'll be curious about that, and I love those m medieval time period, like, uh, fantasy adventure type movies, given I real, of course, like, my favorite movie trilogy of all time is Lord of the Rings. Though I'm a big Star Wars fanatic, I do have to admit, Lord of the Rings trilogy is insanely good, and I even enjoyed the Hobbit movies, though I felt that about five armies kind of underwhelmed me, to say the least. But I still like those type of genre movies, which is why I'm giving Warcraft a chance, since I like fancy adventure films. Coming in at number nine, is actually a, is another video game based movie. It's uh, being co-directed and co-acted by this one individual, Michael Fassbender, which of course is right now been nominated for Best Actor of the Year for his portrayal of Steve Jobs. Though, of course, anybody who knows me knows I don't like Steve Jobs. Just saying. But, um, and that is the live action which they start production now of, uh, based on one of my current favorite game franchises, Assassin's Creed. Number nine. Why is Assassin's Creed reasonably up on my list? One, because as I said, it's one of my favorite current game franchises. Two, I'm a huge fan of Michael Fassbender. That's one thing, like in particular stuff, I love Michael Fassbender as Magneto. Like uh, X-Men First Class, 
as I've said before, is tied for being my number one all-time favorite comic book movie. Michael Fassbender in that bar scene with those former Nazis, like with the knife and gun, oh my word, that's just an incredible scene. He brings a whole nother level of depth and layers to the character of Magneto that we never saw, even with Ian McKellen. Though his portrayal was good, Fassbender just took the character to a whole nother level. And that, and also in, of course, X-Men Days of Future Past, which are both incredible films. And I'm a huge Brian Singer fan, of course, though he did not do First Class. Still incredible film. But yes, I'm looking forward to Assassin's Creed. Next, number eight is actually a tie between two movies coming out. The first is Doctor Strange which I'm very curious about, given the main director on the film helped uh, direct a little unknown at the time incredible horror film called Sinister, which, if I had to list right now, my alt, like, my favorite movies, say, like, top elite 10 or 15 whatever favorite movies of the new millennia, I'd have to actually probably put the first Sinister up there somewhere. Sinister is my number two favorite horror film of the 2010s. Right behind the first Insidious film. I loved Sinister. So good creepy elements with also the uh, character, like the atmosphere, was one of the big awesome things about Sinister which is what makes me really stoked about Doctor Strange, is he's good with that supernatural horror aspect, because which we saw in Sinister, and he's bringing that to the supernatural realm, which is going to be our introduction to the supernatural world in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Doctor Strange. That's one of the things that really I'm looking forward to, is seeing those supernatural horror elements that he's so good at, as well as the atmosphere and the whole just feeling like everything around is just going to, I feel, be really well done because of the director that chose to do Doctor Strange. And also, I'm really stoked about this movie because of who's playing Doctor Strange. We're talking about freaking... Oh my goodness. Ugh. He's just such an incredible actor. Which, of course, that being the great... Sometimes I my brain freezes for a moment. My apologies. But, of course, he played in... Of course, he plays in the BBC TV series uh, Sherlock... And, of course, he also, Benedict Cumberbatch. I can't wait to see Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. That's going to be incredible. I personally, regardless what some people say about Star Trek Into Darkness, I loved Cumberbatch as Khan. He was incredible. Pure and simple. He just killed it as a great villain. This time around, he's going to be more a good guy, but I'm still very curious to see how, in the end, he does as Doctor Strange. But all these different elements, I'll be curious. And we know now that uh, Mordo is going to be in the film. I'm going to be curious to see whether or not one of my all-time favorite villains is going to make an appearance in the movie or not. And that being Dormammu, which... Whenever he does make his appearance in the cinematic universe, I can't wait to see Dormammu. And eventually, hopefully, this guy ends up in the cinematic universe, my main man, Dr. Von Doom of Laveria. But anyways, tied with it at number eight is executive producer Tim Burton, not directing it this time, the sequel to the insanely successful live-action Alice in Wonderland, which... I enjoyed it. I didn't love it like some of my friends did, but I enjoyed it for what it was. And that's because I'm a big Tim Burton fan, so I'm going to be kind of biased. 
but you can still tell it has very much the same art style and stuff. And of course we have Johnny Depp coming back to reprise his old role as the Mad Hatter. And of course we have the Queen of Hearts returning as well. This time with a new, more powerful evil. Uh, but the new movie is called Alice Through the Looking Glass. And it looks like it's kind of a darker, more mature tone than um, the first movie did. It looks like it is definitely going for a more mature tone. I don't know if it's still going to end up PG like the first one. Actually, it looks like it might be able to pull off a PG-13 rating. Though, I'd say they'll probably stick with a PG to get more families in there. Though, anymore, I think a lot of families go even PG-13s anymore, just saying. Coming in at number 7. Some people would probably have in their top 3, but this is for me. I'm just not as especially after the last trailer, it dropped. It was like number 4 on the list, but after the last trailer, it dropped to 7th. I'm not as highly looking forward, but I'm still looking forward to it, though, nevertheless. And that being at number 7, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Yes, I know a lot of people would expect it to be in, like, top 3 spots. As I said, originally it was, like, number 4. Now it's number 7 because the last trailer kind of killed some of the excitement I was looking forward to. So my apologies for that. But, yeah, I'm very much looking forward, for the most part still, but i really not looking forward to the disgusting, stupid casting of Lex Luthor. That still infuriates me with the casting choice. Now, to be fair, I'm actually looking forward to who they casted as Batman Ben Affleck. As I've told people before, I'm actually looking forward to see what he brings to role, though I still say Christian Bale was hands down the best Batman, even if he does have that ridiculous voice thing he did. It was kind of ridiculous and insane, but I got a kick out of it. That's just me. Number six is um, from, is a tie. It is between uh, DC and their, sorry about noise in the hallway. People are walking up and down making noise out there, so my apologies. Um, tied at number six is from the DC Universe Suicide Squad. Which I'm still really looking forward to, but yep, it made it a little higher than Batman v Superman. I'm more curious because I'm curious about Will Smith playing Deadshot. I'm also very curious about, since they have said that Deathstroke will be in, I'll be curious about how whoever it is they cast the role of Deathstroke, how his patrol will be. And I'm curious about, uh, also very curious about Harley Quinn. And I'm also very curious about the new Joker, because unlike some people, I don't bow down and worship Heath Ledger's Joker. As I said, it's a good Joker. It's not my favorite. My favorite is the animated Joker by, of course, some would say is Luke Skywalker or whatever. But the incredible greatness that is simply known as... Yeah, the simple greatness that is known as... Whatever. I give up. Anywho, um... Also tied at number six is the new Disney film coming out next year, The Jungle Book. This was something that came out of nowhere until I saw the first trailer and it blew me away. I'm so looking forward to it. The cast is in, voice cast is insane for it. But it's going to be cool getting to see a new take. And I'm very curious about the, uh, the snake, especially kind of curious because... They chose uh, Scarlett Johansson to do the role of the snake. So that kind of has my curiosity. I'm also curious to hear when he talks and stuff, uh, Shere Khan, Baloo, King Louie, but I just can't wait. Such a great cast and stuff. And from what it looks like, it looks like they're going for... A much darker tone, more like the actual novel, The Jungle Book. So we shall see how it turns out.
Number five from Brian Singer and the newest and last of what they're calling this possibly the new trilogy, the new X Men trilogy. And I'm kind of really curious with uh, the angle they're going for with Apocalypse. Because he says, you know me by many names. Krishna. Uh, Ra. And other names. And it definitely has my curiosity. I'm kind of liking the angle they're going for with Apocalypse this time around. Now, just so you know... And, of course, yes, this is X-Men Apocalypse at number five. Because this looks like, I think the first trailer was incredible. It was really well done. Very much looking forward to it, indeed. But we shall see in the end how it ends up. But, yeah, it definitely deserves top five. Because I'm loving these X-Men movies too much. Coming in at number four is the very first of the Star Wars Anthology films, which comes out next December, Star Wars Rogue One. And I'm really stoked because it takes place, of course, after Episode 3, but before Episode 4, and involves the Rebels suing the Death Star plans, and so you have the Empire trying to stop them from getting the plans, obviously, to Leia and the Rebels. And... Also, Darth Vader is returning for Rogue One, so we're going to get to see Darth Vader again. That's going to be awesome. And of course, we got to get uh, a certain somebody to come back, which I know he will come back, obviously, to voice Vader again. But I can't wait to see Vader on the big screen again next December. We're one year away from Rogue One, and we're just a year and a half away from Star Wars Episode 8. Which, after seeing twice now, Episode 7, I can't wait for Episode 8. And coming in at number 3 is one of the soonest movies to come out, which comes out in February. We're just about a month and a half away now from this film. And that is Deadpool. Originally, I wasn't really looking forward as much because I never was as big a hardcore Deadpool fan like a lot of people out there. But as the trailers come out, as I've seen the passion stuff with this ridiculous online campaign, like the Halloween stuff he did, and they show up with like Santa Hat and stuff, Ryan Reynolds just kills it as Deadpool. He's hilarious. I can't stop laughing my ass off every time I see. Ryan Reynolds come as Deadpool, and the Red Band trailer of Deadpool just killed it and totally sold me on the movie. I'm now really actually stoked. And yeah, Deadpool's number three, most looking forward to movie next year. I did not expect to be looking this forward to Deadpool, but I am. Number two. We are returning to the Wizarding World next year for the first of a new trilogy next year next fall and being written by J.K. Rowling we return to the Harry Potter universe or rather the Wizarding World and yes this will take place 70 years before the events of Harry Potter so this will take place probably a good 20 probably 10 20 years before Voldemort is even born so, this is before the Dark Lord and everything. And it's going to take place in New York, which is going to be awesome. And involves the Department of Mystery of Magic and everything. And the new film is called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I was already stoked because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. And I've read the small little book, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them thing, which is really cool. So I'm really stoked about this, and yeah, hands down, number two most anticipated movie next year, possibly may actually end up tied with number one, but I so can't wait. And last off, before I mention number one, there is one other honorable mention I forgot to put on here, the list. 
Well, we'll actually see it after number one. Number one. From the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Captain America Civil War. Because unlike some people, I really, really enjoyed um, Avengers Age of Ultron. I, Ultron is now my number one favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Hands down. Number one, Ultron. Number two, Loki. Number three, Ronan the Accuser. Regardless, regardless of what people say, I enjoyed Ronan. But, and then probably Yellow Jacket. And I loved Ant-Man, which is why I'm looking forward to also Civil War again to see Ant-Man in it, the debut of Black Panther, and of course, most importantly of all, the Marvel Cinematic Universe debut of my number one favorite comic book hero of all time, hands down, Spider-Man. Not my favorite Spider-Man, because my favorite is Andrew Garfield, but... I'm going to give this new kid Holland, it's, it, I'm hoping he ends up better than Tobey Maguire. Because I wasn't a big fan of Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. He's a good Peter Parker, not Spider-Man. Hopefully this kid has the same spunk, attitude, and sarcasm that, you know, Andrew Garfield had. Fingers crossing that he kills this Spider-Man. Though it won't be a significant role. So it's going to be good, and yes, by the way, I know probably in the end, obviously, Captain America is going to win because it's called Captain America Civil War. But I'm going to be running there with uh, Tony Stark Iron Man because I'm an Iron Man fan. Huge. I liked Iron Man before he was popular, but Robert Downey Jr. J kills it as Tony Stark. I mean, it's got to be nice to get a basically act like yourself every day and making like 50, 55 million dollars a movie. Just getting to act like yourself. But we shall see. And that is the top 12 most anticipated films of 2016, at least for me personally. Tell me what movies are you most looking forward to. And until next time, I'll see you here in YouTube land soon enough. And of course, stay tuned. For upcoming two comic book reviews, Darth Star Wars Darth Vader number 9 and Star Wars number 10. And I'll see you all next time here in YouTube land. And also, happy holidays and have a good upcoming 2016.